Hello, hello everyone. This session will be uh, started at uh, 11 o'clock. Uh, before this session, I want to know how many people here uh, who uh, don't speak Chinese? Raise your hand. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. So, um, we we didn't, uh, di uh, didn't expect too many so many uh, people who don't speak Chinese. Uh, uh, so we are going to do it uh, with English. So that's a small change. Hello, let's get started. Uh, welcome to uh, Sigmodic Cluster Intro and uh, Deep Dive. Uh, today, I and uh, Jian Chiu will uh, uh, take, this, uh, take this talk. And um, for me, I'm, I'm Hong Kai from uh, Huawei Cloud. Yeah, hi, uh, I'm Chiu Jian from Red Hat. Um, so thanks for coming. Okay. Uh, this talk will cover uh, what the uh, SIG multi cluster and, uh, uh, and uh, its uh, recently development activity, uh, including, uh, uh, including our SIG multi, multi cluster website and uh, uh, a bunch of uh, uh, APIs including cluster site and uh, uh, class uh, cl uh, site and uh, class profile and uh, the uh, multi class service API and so on. And uh, at the end, we'll uh, share about how to contribute to the to the SIG. So uh, SIG multi cluster, of course, it will focus the. Uh, technical uh, te technical problem with uh, multi clusters. Um, so, uh, multi cluster uh, is everywhere, and uh, there there are multiple reasons that people use more than one clusters, such as uh, the application is large enough and cannot uh, be applied in a single cluster. You know. And uh, uh, the other case, like uh, they might be uh, put the application as close as to their customers. For example, they might be uh, deploy the uh, application to to China or to U.S. or some other countries. And uh, also, there may be some uh, rules, uh, law, or law rules that the customer data cannot be transferred from country to country. So uh, that's the uh, reason that people need to run multi clusters. Okay. Uh, Sigma multi cluster. Also, uh, uh, glad to hear your uh, use the stories, your use case, and. Uh, uh, your problem, and so just uh, tell us. So, <coughs> uh, SIG model cluster now focus on uh, building blocks and uh, some uh, APIs, and uh, we uh, actually this SIG try tried uh, uh, to build a central. Uh, System like uh, the Kubeified product, and it solves uh, uh, optional problem. But now the this SIG more focused on building building blocks. So these building blocks will be uh, integrated by the third party pro product. So like uh, I <laughs> like I'm from the Kamada product, and. The, QGN from the uh, OCM product. So, 
at uh, last year, I think, yeah, uh, we have just built the uh, multi-cluster website. And uh, in, the, uh, in the website, uh, we uh, document our, all our works there, uh, including the APIs as well as the um, uh, practice. Uh, so just uh, tell us what's missing or uh, what you want to see in the, obs uh, in the website. OK. OK, yeah, so I will, I'm going to introduce something about uh, several concepts uh, relating to, mostly relating to the uh, multi-cluster service. Um, this is one of the problems that we want to resolve in the multi-cluster, that is to access the services from one cluster to another cluster uh, in a way that it is quite transparent. Like you can have a DNS, FQDNA, name, and then you can access a service just like a service in a cluster. So to resolve this problem, there are several concepts. The first one is called cluster set. The cluster set in general is, uh, is to define a group of the cluster. But there are some certain principle uh, that uh, the cluster set needs to conform. Uh, something like namespace sameness like you will ensure something, some third party or some kind of the controller need to ensure that the, the different cluster have the same namespace and uh, this service will be deployed in the same namespace with the same name in these clusters. And uh, certainly there'll be like the same single, uh, single authority, there's a single high degree of trust within the set. It's just like, um, a group of the cluster that owned by a single authority. So with that, we also need to know from the cluster side where, how you can identify each cluster. Um, and then there is another API that is called about API. Uh, and also is uh, it's the API name is called cluster property. So this is to identify a single cluster, like what's a cluster set? this cluster belong to and uh, what's the uh, unique ID that this cluster has in this cluster set. So with these two API, we can singly identify cluster in a cluster set. And those two things can be grouped together to define a FQDN name for a single cluster. So uh, please notice that those APIs are not require a central plan, a central control plan. It's just a um, cluster set is just a concept, and class about API is an API in each cluster you want the uh, you want the service to be exposed. Um, and um, here is the metadata. Uh, here is about more detail about uh, about the API. Like uh, uh, the API name is cluster property. You can define the key and the values. Like the name could be class ID and could be cluster set. And you, it, it is extensible enough that you can also define some other certain properties in the cluster that you want to expose. Uh, but again, this is just in the cluster you want to manage. It's not uh, in the control plane, a centralized control plane. So with this two API, the third one is called MCS API. So MCS API is also in each managed cluster that you can basically expose and service and allow this service to be accessed by another cluster. Uh, some, uh, the example here is like that this is just a namespace. And then uh, you have service. Uh, the pink box here is like a namespace and there is service, same service in the same namespace in a different cluster. So another service can access this service using the FQDN uh, way um, to access all the service in the different cluster. Um, so this is CAP, and um, there is two APIs. One is called service import, and another is service export. Um, so service export is basically to export a service to, to let it access to other um, clusters, and then you 
when you want to access a service in one cluster, you need to also need to create a service import, and then you can access these services. Um, so this uh, doesn't, so we only focus on the API and common behavior, so there are several in different implementations uh, from the different project, um, the, including Sabrina has one, JKE, Istio, they, they also have their own implementations, but they all follow the same uh, API behavior for the service export and service import. Um, and uh, the, another thing is cluster IP and headless service uh, works as the same as uh, in, low, uh, in cluster service. Uh, this two is uh, behave the same, even though it is uh, multi-cluster. And uh, there's another effort that we are, the, the SIG is working with gateway API that you can expose the service import, uh, the, the, the service import from the gateway API. Okay, uh, so Gateway API is for service way to API, as you know. So you can create an HTTP route and reference a service import, and then the, the Gateway API can basically uh, using a load balancer way, et cetera, to access different services uh, from the different cluster. So next is about the orchestration. Uh, Hong Tai will introduce. Okay. Uh, the first uh, solid use case uh, people think about multi-cluster might be uh, how to uh, deliver the, their applications across clusters. That's what we say, uh, w w that, that we usually say that the cluster federation or uh, uh, orchestrate uh, uh, maintainers across clusters. Um, that means you uh, you take uh, the the application as a, a multi class application. So uh, you after you deploy the your uh, application, you actually you don't care the how how many uh, how the replicas uh, will be divided across cluster. No, uh, for example you. When you deploy a deployment to a cluster, the, all the replicas will be uh, located in one cluster, right? But for multi cluster, uh, the replicas might be divided to more than one cluster. Actually, the multi cluster, uh, I think, uh, um, for uh, for the SIG has uh, developed uh, two products. And first is the federation. Uh, we call that federation V1. And then uh, we uh, started uh, uh, the second product named Kufite. Have, uh, have anybody heard of the Kufite product, Ready High? No? Oh, just one. <laughs> That's why. Okay, uh, the Kufed is a, uh, a federation project, and um, he uh, the it um, uh, focus on uh, focus on manager applications across clusters. Uh, for a simple use case that, that you deploy uh, a deployment, and uh, the Kufed view might be uh, divided the the replicas to multiple clusters. Um, but unfortunately, this project um, had been carved uh, last year. And uh, uh, the SIG uh, will not uh, build uh, the another product. And uh, then the, the, the SIG will focus on building, uh, building the uh, the APIs and uh, some some building blocks. Mm. So uh, luckily that we have uh, a lot of uh, projects in CINCEF, uh like uh, Kamada, OCM, and uh, uh, Cluster ma Manager, <laughs> uh, Fleet Manager. Uh, sorry. Uh, so. Uh, 
there are a lot of projects uh, continue the uh, development development of a uh, federation and uh, uh, for the uh, orchestration area the SIG will focus on build uh, the cluster inventory API and um, this API uh, is all about to uh, let third party projects to discover clusters uh, just like what we did in in the uh, micro Microsoft system, and we might be uh, discover uh, service and uh, uh, in multi cluster area we we need to discover uh, clusters, so we need a uh, uh, cluster profile like this one. And this uh, class profile uh, represents the basic information of a cluster, like cluster version and uh, cluster status. And uh, maybe we'll include some cluster uh, secrets. And uh, this, uh, this information will be used by third party projects like Argo CD, Argo Workflow, um, they can uh, discover how many clusters there are and how to uh, deliver applications to uh, these clusters. And uh, for more details uh, about the inventory API, we have uh, another session uh, at this Friday, uh, and we will uh, talk more about this API, about how, uh, what's the uh, use case, and how we uh, design and develop this API, and uh, as well how this API will be uh, used by third-party products. So. Uh, for uh, for next uh, mod classic, we we'll, uh, will uh, focus on um, what's the best practice for uh, people to uh, to use mod clusters, and uh, if there are some uh, re recommendation to users, and uh, we might uh, build a, a global controller. Uh, so, and uh, what we need to uh, like uh, manage my clusters. Okay. Yeah. So, um, uh, so I think well, how uh, we want our, uh, the t uh, the members uh, and the, the other guys and developers to help us. So as you have known that we what are we working on? So we are working on the tools that to manage multi cluster. We want to build some basic concept and that could be like integrated with third party. So. Um, so we want to get some more input on what's the use case that you have met in the multi-cluster uh, context, what problem that you, uh, maybe your customer or you have in your uh, environment, uh, essentially on the, on the multi-cluster environment. Um, anything need help, want help, any unique needs, and uh, so if you, uh, you also can like to, because we have the website, but the website we will introduce something like APIs, use case, um, and um, some description of what, uh, what, what, what problem we want to resolve. And um, you could take a look at that and see if you, anything that we are missing and you want to in improve for the website. Uh, and uh, we have several APIs. We hope that we, uh, anyone can take a look at that. And any use case that is missing there need not able to improve, that is also helpful. Um, so here is some link, like the, pay, uh, the homepage, the Slack channel, uh, G, uh, group, uh, G group list. And we also have um, a bi-weekly SIG multi-cluster meeting, not quite friendly in APAC time zone, but anyone from Europe or 
um, our United States will be uh, could join, and also we were talking with SIG multi cluster uh, guys that we probably will have a more APAC friendly meeting in the future. So, yeah. And thanks. Uh, that's all. Any questions? Um, we uh, we actually uh, because we have a panel uh, that on Friday we will answer that more in more detail. detail but uh, there's different like cluster API is more on provision and uh, scale up the cluster cluster profile as Hong Cai uh, talked. It's more on discover the cluster and light third party software including Argo, Q, and other to know how many cluster you have and how you can access those cluster and to deploy workload, et cetera. That's not uh, the mission of the class API. Yeah. Uh, so I have a Do you want, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, may I repeat your, your question? You want to know uh, if you have a operator, you want to know uh, if a cluster, you, you want to get uh, the, the healthy status of a cluster. So your question is uh, where is the operator will be run, right? So, uh, that, okay, that's a good question. Actually, I think the way we uh, uh, we 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 get how if a cluster is in in a healthy state, and actually uh, we will be uh, like check the the uh, healthy. Uh, there is a, a, a HTTP in the. HTTP pass for check a cluster if uh, if it is healthy, right? Do you know that? Healthy Z, uh, right? Um, so uh, actually, we uh, the we actually we don't care the operator runs, you know, as long as it can access the cluster and it can get the cluster healthy. So usually the operator will be run outside of the cluster. So even if the cluster is uh, a totally uh, down or something, so the operator still can get the, the, the healthy status. So, so that means it doesn't have to be in a general risk, right? So uh, I want to check if the cluster is still healthy and mm. invoke that HTTP API. Yeah, 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 sure. Uh, I think the best practice is run the operator outside the cluster. For example, uh, we, we, we have a uh, 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 projects, and uh, for example, Kamada, it runs outside the cluster, and uh, he can connect multiple clusters and check the status of the cluster.
Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so so we are trying to so we we basically do not want to resolve a very big problem. Um we want to collect the use case and uh, generalize that and try to build some simple concept. So as you can know that the cluster set and uh, multi-cluster service, it is just to, uh, uh, to, to put some effort on a service access across cluster. Cluster profile is another way that is very lightweight way that you can identify a cluster from a control plane. So from the original cap, if you uh, from the original cap, the cluster profile API doesn't have to be a CRD or a declarative way. It could be just like any kind of API, but we just uh, de declare we just define something like what you need to have in the cluster profile API, so that third party com consumer can know that it's a cluster, and it it can access a cluster, but. The feedback from the SIG is they want this to be a CRD. So they want another Kube control Kube cluster to be as a control plan. So that's still something that is still uh, commonly used by many users today. Mod Classic, no, <laughs> but uh, we have uh, uh, an, uh, some sensitive projects. They have the pro, uh, the policy. Uh, the um, for example, uh, actually in the tomorrow's uh, keynote, keynote, there will be a, a, a use case shared, and uh, exactly the the case you just mentioned that. Um, the use case is that uh, uh, the user might be have multiple, multiple clusters, and each cluster have some GPU resources there. The GPU might be in GCP or Azure or, or some some, uh, some other clusters. So what they want to build the uh, system is that build a platform of uh, on these uh, all these clusters, and when they want to uh, deliver or apply a training job, they just uh, deploy uh, deploy the job to the platform, and then the platform will try to find a cluster for the job. Is that what you you, you need? Uh, tomorrow, the the keynote uh, from from Huawei Cloud, yeah. And uh, um, you, <laughs> so okay. And uh, you might need to 
know more about maybe Kamada project? Yeah. Yeah, we are interested in that actually. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I'm one of the maintainer of the Kamada. <laughs> okay, more questions? You can ask uh, both in Chinese or English. Okay, if no more questions, uh, so thank you, thank you all, thanks.